Virgil Ortiz versus Maurice Hooker post fight. If you like the kind of work that I do here, do consider supporting my channel on Patreon. I also have Cash App, which seems to be working. And a big shout out to all those people who already have and are currently supporting the channel. At any rate, good fight last night. Very entertaining. Uh, basically showcase for Ortiz as I think most of us expected went the way we thought it would go um, super competitive but not necessarily close maybe Maurice won one round I wouldn't call it a crime if you gave him two wasn't really scoring it but Ortiz was basically the boss for the most part Got a little bit affected by a couple of shots from Maurice Hooker. Got a little bit backed up here and there, thereafter. And got a little bit bruised up. I think a lot of that bruising was from Hooker hitting Ortiz's gloves and gloves, his gloves crashing into his own face, basically. But he also took some good shots. Uh, kind of rolled some of them a little bit here and there, but did fall asleep on defense a little bit, even though his defense is better than average, simply by the virtue of the fact that he keeps his damn hands up. And Hooker does not, right? As we've talked about many times on this channel, with everything else being equal, and it actually wasn't in this fight, I would say Ortiz had more of the advantages. When one guy keeps his hands up and the other guy not so much, chances are the guy with his hands up is going to win the fight. More often than not, if not always, with everything else being equal, this sort of dynamic seems to play true. I don't know if people are talking about this, but Maurice Hooker was significantly bigger. Little do you know, he actually has quite a few more fights at welterweight than Virgil Ortiz does. And it showed. He was much the bigger man. Maybe an inch, two inches taller from the looks of it. According to Boxwork, he had a 10-inch reach advantage. I don't think it was that much, but uh, definitely had a significant reach advantage. Didn't use his reach advantage. Didn't get full extension on his jab. Stood too close. Didn't control distance. But... That's Hooker. He's not an A-level fighter. And I don't think Ortiz is either. At least not yet. So, Hooker, um, you know, looks stronger in this fight than what we've seen in some of his bigger fights at 140. Probably because he wasn't draining himself as much, right? Walter Wade is his natural weight division. I know he's probably retiring, but, you know, he puts on a little bit of muscle, like literally five pounds, and he's a 154-pounder easily. The guy was always a welterweight, and he looks like a pretty big one right now. So, not draining himself to 140, he looked to take a better shot at 147 pounds. And ultimately, got the fight beaten out of him. Claimed to have some kind of a hand problem. Kind of looked like he may, but... You know, he did quit. Credit to Ortiz for making him quit, beating the fight out of him. But the guy quit. He was game for a few rounds, but I don't know. Haven't been stopped before, I guess. Haven't been in some tough fights. Um, Knowing that he really wasn't winning the fight, he just checked out. And I don't have a problem with him doing that. I respect that he gave everything he had in the first six rounds. And that was all he had. Okay, That's why Ortiz had a tough time. Because Hooker came to win. He stepped on the gas from the very, very beginning. And I don't think he had... And I think he knew this. I don't think he had 12 of those rounds in him. Okay, Looked to me like he was trying to knock Ortiz out. Which was a good idea. Seeing as, you know, it's a golden boy card. Golden boy. Highly touted prospect. That is what it is. And... What it is, well, you know. And I give Hooker props. 
after being hit, not very cleanly, but twice after taking a knee by Ortiz, which will lead me to my next point, he didn't try to bitch out like a lot of fighters would have, right? Um, probably because the punches weren't very clean and, you know, he was fine to go on, but a lot of fighters would have, some fighters would have looked to uh, get a DQ win out of that. He didn't even hesitate, right? Got right up and went back to war. So props to him for coming to win, okay? He just, like I said, put it all out on the line, uh, trying to stop Ortiz, knowing that he doesn't have 12 rounds in him. And checked out once, uh, you know, he gave it all he had and it wasn't nearly enough to win but round or two. So he just gave up again. I got no problem with that. Insofar as Ortiz pounding on him while he was on the ground, um, that's an experience. And that's something that he definitely lacks. He's a little bit too gung-ho. I think it would serve him well. And granted, he's only 23 years old with 17 fights. It would serve him well to chill out a little bit, pick his shots better, be more judicious, more aware, uh, calm, right? Not get into any of that jibber-jabber like uh, um, his coach was telling him, right? Robert Garcia. Uh, so there's a lot of, you know, he's a young guy, very inexperienced, and it, and it shows. I think if we're going to criticize his performance a little bit, I think he needs to learn how to use his jab better, uh, throw a greater variety, set his jab up more. Um, he's a pure puncher, which is okay, but, you know, use your hands to do more than just throw punches is what I'm saying, right? Faint, fake a few punches here and there. Don't commit to all of them, right? Take some power, take some speed off the shots, be more, pick your shots better, basically. He just, he just throws everything with power, right? Which, you know, can you do that for 12 rounds? Okay, maybe when he's 23, 24, 25, 27, maybe he can, but that's, you know, he won't be when he's 32 or so. He won't be able to do that. Maybe not even that old. And he throws a lot of punches and everything with power, so, and he's been able to stop everybody, but, you know, once those chins start getting better as he's moving up in, in levels, through the levels, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of punchers knock everybody out on the way up and then eventually get stopped themselves, mostly due to exhaustion, right? So Jean Pascal is a good example of that. Uh, Roy Jones Jr., even though there were other um, factors there as well. So you know, you gotta be. I think Keith Thurman is probably going to be one of those guys one day but he seems to have adjusted his game and doesn't throw everything with full power anymore so maybe not at any rate Ortiz is inexperienced there, there's a lot of things he needs to work on uh, obviously every fighter could any fighter could get better at anything but some of the bigger flaws is insofar as I see in him is again jab more jabs different variety of the jab different speed on the jab you know maybe hooking off the jab throwing an up jab sometimes when he does the peekaboo and gets low throw it up throw it to the body double it up right and work off the jab better um, I think he has a lot a lot to learn still I think he could work on a variety of punching not just in so far as speed and power but the angles, um, different types of combinations. Um, he needs to work on cutting the ring off better, not just with his feet, but definitely that, but also with punches. How to throw cutoff punches, how to get to the spot faster. Um, overall, I think he could use, he could work on his footwork. It's not bad, but it could be better. You know, again, young fighter has has a lot to work on. But those are some of the things that I notice. Head movement. He does move his head, but it's like you got to tell him to do that. He kind of forgets to. And it's a little bit predictable still. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, there's just so much room for improvement with this guy. There are so many things he could add to his game, so on and so forth. But he, you know, he really hasn't fought anybody yet. This was his first, uh, I think, legit step up. He just became a contender, um, you know. And the future is bright. I think he just got to... You just got to work on a lot of things. And I, I would say the jab is the most important part of his game. And then working off the jab, using the jab, setting up the jab, and then using the jab to set up other punches. And not being so gung-ho and, and wild and crazy and excitable. Like, he needs to settle down and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, good performance, but again, not anything we didn't expect. Good little showcase fight for Ortiz. After the fight, he called out um, Terence Crawford. I felt like he was being a little bit pressured into it. Personally, I don't think he's ready. But if they make that fight next, then I'm all for it too. You know, it's it's a good fight. I think he's very dangerous for Terence Crawford. I would pick Crawford to beat him, but uh, he'll give Terence Crawford a lot of problems early. But... He'll probably gas toward the end of the fight, and Terence will probably stop him. If I had to, you know, based on this performance, I would... That's kind of how I see that fight right now. But I think he's very dangerous, and he could stop Crawford too. But he'd have to do it pretty early, I think. Um, but again, if he's going to beat someone like Crawford, he has to do these things that I'm talking about. Like, if that fight were to happen next, I would train him to throw fewer punches actually more jabs maybe but fewer power punches and be very judicious because he's not going to get a lot of chances on Crawford there will be chances there to land on Crawford but not that many so he has to be really judicious pick his shots and when the chance is there he really has to capitalize on it and put Crawford down and try to keep him down basically because Crawford will adjust and it's not likely he will be getting caught with the same kind of punch more than two or three times but as it is the case with Terence Crawford uh, he once again proves that he's not really willing to fight anybody saying that um, it's Ortiz who doesn't really want to fight that's just a projection he could be right about Ortiz because uh, he did seem a little bit pressured to me and I would say he probably still needs another fight or two, but he's he's saying the right things, and Terence Crawford isn't right. If the kid ain't ready, just take him on. You're gonna get a lot of credit, a lot more than all these other guys you've been fighting. That Virgil Ortiz right now would be arguably his best win, maybe on the level of Posto, but maybe even better, right? Seventeen and no, seventeen knockouts. Uh, you know, just stopped. A good, good opponent, right? Former world title holder. Uh, got a lot of hype going into this fight. I think this would be number one and number two victory for Terrence at this point in time. Right, but he's saying, oh, he doesn't want it. Essentially, he's just projecting the fact that he's not interested in fighting uh, Virgil Ortiz himself. Because Terrence Crawford is not interested in fighting anybody. He just wants to fight bums and get paid a whole bunch of money. I, I mean, just look at his record. Asked about, he was asked, maybe I'll make another video about this, but he was asked about Errol Spence Jr. And he said he's, he's over that fight. He doesn't want that fight anymore. They asked Errol Spence, and he wasn't too enthusiastic about it, but he said the fight will happen, I guess. Right? He wasn't, like, all about it, but Terrence Crawford categorically stated the fight ain't happening. He's, he's moving on. He doesn't want the fight. That's what he said. Right? The, like... I'll make another video about that. Anyway, congratulations to Ortiz. Uh, good performance. Promising young prospect just turned contender. Um, he, I bet you he's back in the gym tomorrow probably working on things. I would be if I were him because he's got a lot of work to do. All right. Good fighter. Promising fighter. Very good performance. Um... Definitely has title holder potential, and I think he may one day grab up a title, even if not in his first try. 
But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not too high on the guy, but I, I see a lot of potential. So we just we just gonna have to wait and see, basically. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. And once again, if you feel like supporting the channel, it would be much appreciated. Thank you.